Okay, we are back and we're changing gears over to JRH2. We've had a lot of conversation about JRH2 this week, which is our resolution to apologize um, as a, uh, to Vermonters as a result of the state sanction to the suffering and, and, and damage done um, as a result of the state sanction eugenics policies and practices. Um, we've had a pretty hearty conversation the last two days with many of the witnesses that have been present throughout this conversation, uh, members of the affected communities and uh, historians. And we are, I think, at a point here where I wanted to take, have Michael include uh, as much as what we had talked about, he did stay after yesterday and got some clarification from one of the historians on some of this early material. And so I'd like Michael to kind of take us now through this bill again and to show us the new language. Um, again, we are at a point where just, I think this is at a point where we are, um, ready to hear this material, but also to edit, um, edit it down a little bit where we need to edit it down. And, um, but I think it, I think it represents, I don't think I got, I don't think I informed Michael of all the smaller changes. I, I would hope to, um, he had a list of the smaller changes that he had heard from us during conversation while he was online with us. But um, Michael, why don't I just pass the microphone to you? And if you can now take us through this draft, this is draft 1.2, which is available on our website. Um, that Good would be great. Good afternoon, members of the committee. For the record, Michael Chernick, Legislative Council. I also, uh, as an FYI, had a conversation with the chair around quarter of four yesterday, and he made an effort to fill me in on a few more pieces and with all that information in my scribble notes, I worked last night to create a new version and I will go through it now. And I also uh, remember to use the new reference with respect to the question of Abenaki versus uh, Mohawk or Huron. And I went back to the statute and we'll see where it travels, but this is a, the version that exists in my system as of the moment. Uh, the title remains the same. The joint resolution sincerely apologizing and expressing sorrow and regret to all individual Vermonters and their families and descendants who were harmed as a result of state sanctioned eugenics policies and practices. Whereas state institutions established in the 19th century, including the Vermont State Hospital for the Insane and the Vermont Reform School became settings for the implementation of eugenics policies. And whereas in 1912, the intent of the General Assembly to develop policies that in later years would be identified as the practice of eugenics was manifested with the passage of the subsequently vetoed S-79 of 1912, an act to authorize and provide for the sterilization of imbeciles, feeble-minded and insane persons, rapists, confirmed criminals, and other defectives. If I just may, as an aside, Many of those words are words that we would not use in the statutes in 2021. And through the enactment of Acts and Resolves number 81 of 1912, an act to provide for the care, training, and education of feeble-minded children, the law authorizing the Brandon Training School, which opened in 1915. Whereas in 1923, the Department of Public Welfare was established and this new state department compiled records on hundreds of families. And whereas in 1925, University of Vermont zoology professor Henry F. Perkins established the discredited eugenics survey of Vermont with the participation of leaders throughout Vermont state government to collect evidence of alleged delinquency, dependency and mental deficiency and this survey targeted Vermonters of Native American Indian heritage. That, by the way, is the language from the statute. Mixed racial heritage or French Canadian heritage. We added in an extra heritage in editing for parallel construction purposes, as well as the poor and persons with disabilities, among others. And whereas in 1927, S-59, an act related to voluntary eugenical sterilization, passed the Senate, but was defeated in the House. 
and whereas the General Assembly adopted 1931 Acts and Resolves Number 174, Act 174, and Act for Human Betterment by Voluntary Sterilization for the purpose of eliminating from the future Vermont genetic pool persons deemed ment mentally unfit to procreate, and whereas Act 74 resulted in the sterilization of Vermonters, and whether these individuals provided informed consent can be questioned, and whereas this state sanctioned eugenics policy was not an isolated example of oppression, but reflected the historic marginalization, discriminatory treatment, and displacement of these targeted groups in Vermont. And whereas eugenics advocates promoted sterilization for the protection of Vermont's old stock and to preserve the physical and social environment of Vermont for their children. And whereas the eugenics survey received assistance from state and municipal officials, individuals, and private organizations and the resulting sterilization, institutionalization, and separation policies intruded on the lives of its victims and had devastating and irreversible impacts on the directly affected individuals that still persist in the lives of their descendants. And whereas in conducting the eugenics survey, the surveyors were granted access to case files from state agencies and institutions, and the files were made available to persons of authority, including police departments, social workers, educators, and town officials. And whereas Vermont's role in the eugenics movement, including the state's sterilization and institution, institutionalization practices, has lasting impacts and contributes to chronic health disparities experienced by Vermonters who are Black or Indigenous and individuals with disabilities who have a low, uh, a low income. That was the new uh, clause that I was asked to include. And whereas as a result of the opening of these files, children were removed from families, individuals were institutionalized or incarcerated, family connections were severed, and the sense of kinship and community was lost. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Senate and House of Representatives that the General Assembly apologizes and expresses its sorrow and regret to all individual Vermonters and their families and descendants who were harmed as a result of state-sanctioned eugenics policies and practices, and be it further resolved that the General Assembly recognizes that further legislative action should be taken to address the coming, the continuing rather, impact of state-sanctioned eugenics policies and related practices of disenfranchisement and ethnocide leading to genocide. And if I may, uh, several of you are already aware that I indicated our uh, editing department and drafting operations indicated it thought that the phrase leading to genocide should have some actual documentation should you decide to leave it in. And I know that's still a topic of conversation. That is it, Mr. Chair. Chair, you're muted. But of course, thank you. Um, I will keep the share screen up and I will um, just make sure you use your raise hand function so I can see it in the in the small group here. Uh, Representative Hango. Thank you. Can you someone please remind me um, on page three, line 16, the new whereas clause where that came from? I missed that. Sure, that was um, that was language that was shared with us yesterday through Su Susan Aronoff from the Disability Rights Council. Um, you know, I would I would consider to put as as I've been talking about with brackets around that. That was his new material that is kind of present looking. Um, so it's up for conversation, but that's this was shared. This was shared as a result of the. Um, it parallels some of the conversation that's going on in the healthcare committee on healthcare disparities. Right. Thank you for reminding me who asked for it. Although I don't disagree with the concept behind it, I feel like it looks out of place in this resolution because we kind of went to a, a very historical document. And um, now all of a sudden we have this this modern um, statement in it um, that 
it it just doesn't seem to fit for me um, because we certainly talk about folks who were disabled or marginalized in many ways um, in in previous whereas clauses. Um, and I think we're we're getting a lot of whereases. I think it's getting really long. Um, and my other comment is I want to thank Mr. Chernick for bringing forth the um, issue that the, the editors um, talked about in terms of ethnocide leading to genocide. That was a resolved clause that was concerning to me last biennium, and it remains a concern um, because it was kind of the first time I had heard it being called a genocide. So um, those are my concerns, and thank you. Thank you, Representative. Um, Representative Kalaki, then Triana. Uh, thank you, Chair. I, I think that Susan's uh, language comes from the health disparities bill out of that committee that is actually going to be in their bill. And I, I think I agree with Representative Tango that I think that that is um, beautifully placed in the health care bill. I'm not, I'm not, as we went through it, I, I thought it, it just didn't seem, so, so that one, I, I, Chair, you said it's in brackets. I, I think it's a good place to keep that in brackets. Um, Michael, I think there's two words that I heard that maybe, um, and one is in the very final resolve, uh, yesterday, Representative Bloomley had put erasure, and I thought that was a good word. Where so, are you? I mean, I missed that. Please okay. tell me where. Uh, I think, well, I won't speak to Representative Bloomley. I think it's practice of disenfranchised Heisman, erasure, and ethnocide. You're absolutely right. That's I, right. Thank you for identifying that for me. Okay. I had scribbled in something and I couldn't quite figure it out. And I wasn't about to include a word that I wasn't sure what it was. And I then played on, it on the safe side. Yeah. But now no, that no. I know it's erasure, I can. I think. And then on, on the top of page four, that whereas um, I heard that the word continuity is important, especially in kind of tribal lineages. So the sense of kinship, continuity, and community. And I think so, that was in there as well. Yeah, that was in the material we talked about no, a little bit, Michael, absolutely yesterday. absolutely right. Thank you on both scores. Co kinship, comma, continuity, comma, and now disenfranchisement, disenfranchisement comma, erasure, com comma, and then the rest of the sentence, however you decide to end it. And, and I'll jump right in, Michael, and say at that first line on the top of page four, as a result of the opening of these files, children and adults. Yeah. Okay. So no. All right. Um, and I say try uh, Representative Triano next, then Walls, then Murphy. Thank you, Chair Stevens. Um, you know, I know there's a lot of discussion surrounding uh, naming uh, any of the tri tribes or bands uh, in this, uh, but I certainly would uh, side with Chief Stevens um, in recognizing that. Um, the uh, tribes presently known as Abenaki um, would, should be included by name. And I thought there was some language surrounding um, Abenaki and other indigenous groups, which would um, not um, uh, exclude anyone else uh, except by name. Um, and I think um, the... Uh, Talking about um, space and length of the uh, of the um, of the resolution at this point, uh, it could be um, better to not to name everything, but to name the uh, Abenaki again, as currently known as, uh, and um, other indigenous bands or other indigenous people. Um, uh, and the other piece that I wanted to comment on is that I would side with Carolyn McGranigan uh, when she. Uh, read her definition of genocide. Um, and I think that the term, using both terms, is uh, more appropriate and, and more descriptive of uh, the ultimate um, result of what we know has happened. So ethnocide leading to genocide would be my preference on that piece. 
uh, based on what Carolyn had uh, read to us and uh, her position on this as a uh, as an indigenous person. All right, Representative Walls, then Murphy. Um, well, yeah, I had two items, and Representative Troyano just mentioned one of them. I do think it's important to name the Abenakis, because I really think among the Native Americans who spoke to us, Judy Dow was definitely in the minority in not wanting to include the name. Whether Abenakis were heard from, didn't want to be named. And I also, I think it might be the fifth whereas, it's on page two, about two thirds of the way down, whereas in 1927, excuse me, the whereas is this, whereas in 1927, I think we'd strike that. I remember uh, we included that because we were documenting the history of the movement, but let's apologize for what we did. And in that instance, the House did the right thing. <laughs> so let's apologize for the wrong things we did. And I, was, I would suggest we strike that, that whereas. Okay, Representative Murphy. Thank you, and I'll follow up on um, what Representative Waltz just said, because I think that this is a joint resolution. We're apologizing for the General Assembly. So I think that um, his argument for excluding it isn't um, maybe accurate. And I certainly think we are trying to make this concise and not necessarily cite every um, step along the way we have documentation on. So I certainly don't insist on it being there, but I just want to clarify that this is a joint resolution we're looking at um, from the General Assembly. So it is appropriate. I think that the 27 um, vote might have laid ground for the one that passed in 31. So I, I do see rationale for maintaining it. Um, I appreciate the addition of the words that um, folks remembered and were able to decipher for Michael. And um, I, I really do think that I, I prefer to go with our um, ed 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 editorial staff and um, have the erasure and, eth and ethnocide and that second, um, therefore, result. So... There's, there's portions up above some of the whereases that I think have some redundancy in them, but um, I'm not going to nitpick um, every word just to surprise y'all. <laughs> I'm Keep sorry. It it, I didn't mean to laugh. <laughs> no, it's quite all right. They, you were intended to. <laughs> um, uh, representative, I think I had Byron next and then... Kalaki, and then Plumley. Uh, thank you, Chair. So I, I'm in agreement that Abnaki should be used at least at one point in here. Um, the portion that was referred to earlier, but I was also looking at page 16, uh, or excuse me, page three, line 16, whereas where Vermonters who are black or indigenous and individuals with disability, maybe black, Abnaki, other indigenous groups and individuals with disabilities, maybe something like that. That was the first area that jumped out at me. Um, to the ethnocide genocide conversation, I think it needs to remain. It speaks to the harsh reality of what occurred. Um, and it's, it, it really provides, a, a, I think, an appropriate tone that needs to exist in the document. Um, they are difficult words, but these are difficult conversations and difficult steps that we're taking. Um, and to that 1927, whereas um, oh, I, I get both sides of that argument, so I think I am going to refrain from an opinion right now because I think I had an opinion and then it was diluted through this conversation. So I'll step back now. Okay. 
Thank you, Representative Kalaki. Thank you, and, and uh, Michael, you, you did an extraordinary job with the history. Thank you for um, how you do these things. Um, I wonder, though, if 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 the history is a little too dense, at, at the risk of, of trying to be this specific, that we might be inconsistent. And so, I would here's what I would posit by looking at this: I would actually drop the first whereas the state institutions established in the 19th century. And I would start with the 1912, because we're about the General Assembly. Um, then I don't know if we need the Department of Public Welfare, whereas um, I do think we need the, so I would propose striking the state institutions established in the 19th century. I would propose striking that. I would propose striking the whereas in 1923, the Department of Public Welfare. I like the next one. I, I think uh, it is important the 1927 because it's a joint resolution. 1931 is clearly really important. And I agree that um, we should have um, Abenaki bands and other indigenous people, that it should be called out. Um, and, and so I, I don't, that would be the language I would propose, but. And then I would take out the, the health things resulting up to today. Um, okay. Did John, all right, Res Representative Bloomley. Hello. So I, um, I, I really appreciate the history um, and I, but I think I agree with John that there are a couple of those, I think it's the same whereas is that John has indicated probably can go without harming that. But I do, but I do think that understanding that it, it wasn't just this one moment in time or this one project, but there was groundwork laid for it um, over time is important to note in the whereas is. Um, I, I actually, what I appreciated, um, going back to the portion that um, Representative Hango and um, somebody else mentioned on page three, um, line 16, I appreciated this uh, <clears throat> section because it, because we're very vague about the impacts on descendants and current communities. And I think, you know, they, those are not limited to health disparities, their inequities and um, <clears throat> economic disadvantages um, um, uh, that, that are experienced by um, folks in many of these groups. Um, and I, I'm not, I don't have a suggestion yet for, for how to reword that, but I, I actually think making a reference to the fact that this has this is we're not just apologizing for a moment in time um the actions of a legislature in the 1930s i i feel that we are um we are recognizing too the 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 persistent long-standing impact that um those actions have had and that we um ha are as a legislature dealing with now um so and then the only other thing, um, I had no other thing. Oh, I, I sent to you, oh, I'll just say share. I sent from the chair some language. I remember hearing from, um, maybe it was Nancy Gallagher, maybe it was Charlene, <clears throat> or maybe it was somebody else the day before, but uh, where we are, are referencing Native Americans, um, one could say um, somebody I think had suggested Vermonters of Native American heritage, which include those who now identify as Abnaki or some of whom identify as Abnaki. Um, <clears throat> and um, I see um, Representative Murphy's point on um, that on page three, line seven, we do or line, yeah, line seven. 
um, <clears throat> that there that still persist, but that's it, that's pretty vague. We, it might, we might want to expand on that um, uh, because we're talking about kind of systemic impacts and not just on those individuals and their families. <clears throat> so. And where was that, that? Where was that? That's in on page three lines. Uh, it's not line seven. It's line 11. But the, <clears throat> it's that yeah, whole clause. Right. That whereas in my mind is a broader statement of the one that um, Representative Bloom Bloomy was was speaking to um, having it's a just, little more still persist in the lives of their descendants. And I, I, I think what, what we do know <clears throat> is that, that the, the harm has affected whole communities, not just their descendants, but whole communities and their, <clears throat> their um, economic well-being, you know, their health, et cetera. It's, I, it, and, and I, so there may be a way to um, either more fully develop that, whereas it starts on line seven, or <clears throat> uh, tweak uh, line 16. Okay, just make, we're just making notes right now. Yep, we'll, yep. We'll review them. Um, I just wanna, one of the things that uh, Representative Triano mentioned is that uh, Carol McGranahan had, had quoted from the United Nations. Um, it was an international convention on December 9th, 1948, on genocide. And genocide, just keeping in our keeping in our mind that sometimes language didn't exist or meant something else. Genocide was a, was a phrase that was coined really in 19, according to the, um, this, this history that I have on, um, th that I'm reading, I'm reading a book um, that is about Jean-Paul Sartre writing on genocide, but this was um, the backup on it. And in 1948, the International Convention on Genocide wrote in article two, and this is what Carol McGranahan shared with us way back in at the beginning of this process. Um, genocide means any of the following acts committed with intent to destroy in whole or in part a national, ethnic, racial, or religious group as such, A, um, killing members of a group, B, causing serious bodily or mental harm to members of the group, C, deliberately inflicting on the group conditions of life calculated to bring about its physical destruction in whole or in part. D, imposing measures intended to prevent births within the group. Or, um, e, forcibly transferring children of the group to another group. And this is considered um, international law, but I do not know, I have not been able to find out if in fact the United States actually signed on to this. So that's where, that's what she was quoting um, at the beginning of this. Um, Michael and then Representative Toronto. Uh, Mr. Chair, if in the end of all your discussions, you decide you would like me to keep that I would very much appreciate getting a copy of that page for supporting evidence so I can show my editor that we that the committee had that discussion and that was its supporting document. Thank you. Okay. Representative Triana. Yes, thank you, Chair Stevens. So I'm, um, I'd like to comment on um, the whereas clause, um, which uh, the state, uh, in um, whereas the state institutions established in the 19th century, uh, you know, I think, again, as I said yesterday, I think the historic per, um, perspective is important. And what really um, screams out to me is that that hospital was that it was called the Vermont State Hospital for the Insane. 
Now, I don't know how many of the folks on this committee have ever been to Waterbury, had ever been to Waterbury. I've been there numerous times to visit mm. clients. And then I vi we visited um, the new Middlesex facility in, uh, uh, in Middlesex, uh, the new Middlesex uh, hospital uh, uh, with the, when I was on Human Services Committee. There was no comparison as to the progress, progression that um, uh, care for the mentally ill um, had uh, taken over the, this period of time. And so that term, and, and, and I've also been to the Brandon School and uh, feel the same way. These are hollowed halls that you can feel um, that people have, were um, abused and um, misused um, who, who lived there and stayed there and were committed there beyond their, uh, their own um, uh, ability to object. And you know, I just think it's important to look at things like that in, the, in this in this conversation. Um, and, you know, and I think that, you know, from Nancy Gallagher's book, uh, you know, I think it did have an important role in the um, uh, development or the uh, or the progression of the eugenics movement uh, uh, and it, which which was coming in at the turn of the century when, you know, Perkins started to uh, incorporate it into his zoology uh, classes and uh and they started to incorporate sociology and biology and zoology all in this attempt to um, uh, hypothesize uh, genetics as as a reason for um, you know for this to be coming about. So I, you know I, I kind of feel like that section should be left in there just just to just to have people think about just these terms: Vermont State Hospital for the Insane. You know, I mean, we are in 2021 and, you know, that notion is just so outrageous to me. I, I just really think it has a place in here. All right. Um, I'm going to take down the screen for a minute so I can see. Is everybody OK if I take down the screen? Um, the, um, ha having had, I don't know if the privilege is the right word, but having had the opportunity to, to be in the Waterbury hospital, um, was very, um, especially after the flood, which was considered a safer time, obviously, cause no one was in it. Um, mm, but you could still see the areas that were not affected by the flood, um, including the stone walls in the tunnels underneath. All the buildings were connected by tunnels. And there were, um, I don't even know what the right name of the, of the hardware is, but there were places where people were hooked, um, chained, you know, to the walls um, at times where that was considered reasonable treatment um the b2 ward which was um where the <laughs> hardest patients were i guess um one of the rooms was literally a, a rubber room it was a padded room that had scratch marks in it and you wondered i wondered when I took the tour and saw these, it's like, well, wait, my knowledge of a padded room is that you're supposed to get your fingernails cut so that you couldn't self harm. And yet somehow people needed to communicate. This was, you know, this was clear that they needed to communicate and figured out how to write on the walls. It was just, um, uh, you know, th this was after, again, it was closed by then. But this is after years of um, involuntary medication. Um, the hospital at its peak had 1,700 patients, all of which were not psychiatric, but they fit in this long list of defected people. Um, could be someone on a bad, on a bender, an unalcoholic bender. It could be a. Uh, mother of a child out of wedlock. Um, and even though this apology 
when it deals with this issue in, in the subject matter doesn't really go into the what continued on for decades after the 30s, after the eugenics survey itself ended and we supposedly stopped doing the, the um, I mean, we took testimony from one of the historians that mentioned that it was known that sterilizations happened in other places. Um, and I think anybody who had an association with the state hospital here in Waterbury could tell you that um, things didn't end in the 30s or 40s or 50s. The language, um, I asked Damien to find out if there's any, and Representative Donahue has done a lot of work in this field, um, if what language still exists in our statutes. And this sterilization law wasn't taken out until 1981. And the language, the language that Michael mentioned, the different, you know, what we call feeble-minded morons and vessels. Um, Representative Donahue led legislation probably 10 or 11 years ago to get that out of statute. So it's just, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of hard at times um, to think that we did this. And this is a field of, of Vermont. The state hospital here in Waterbury always was. It was the state hospital here in Waterbury before um, it closed in the late 70s as a full hospital. Again, it peaked at 1,700 folks. By the time it closed, it probably had 400. And then it was a, then it was a state hospital up until the time of the flood and maybe had anywhere between 50 and 70 people in it um, at max. And yeah, it provided a lot of work for a long time. I'd read obituaries and I'd see folks who used to work in the hospital um, or who were patients there uh, for years and years and years, less so now because um, it's been over 50 years since it's closed. But it's, um, yeah, there's a lot, there was a lot of power in that building. There was a lot of karma in that building. And um, I think more than a few of us, I know of a few people within the, our, our peers who had some direct com, you know, contact with the inner workings of that hospital for a long time. And I don't know if we'll hear from them on this, but it's pretty powerful stuff. Um, I did an art. I did an art installation there the year after the flood to commemorate its closing, and it was um, the testimonies we heard from people who came to see it one last time, patients. Um, it was again, it was pretty powerful stuff. You couldn't help but, but, um, well, I couldn't help but want to work on something like this. So that's my personal part of it. Um, Representative uh, Bloomley, then Toronto. Thanks, Chair. What you're just describing reminds me of um, a similar um, kind of pilgrimage back to the um, orphanage on North Avenue um, by a number of folks when um, uh, when the the college burlington college moved over there and there were a number of folks who came anyway it i, I uh, uh <clears throat> i am trying to address myself however to the issue of the word genocide and i i have you know i've read <clears throat> about uh, a number of efforts, you know, uh, or it, it's often governors who are apologizing um, for the state's history of genocide um, in, in the United States. And um, <clears throat> what I, and, and in many of those announcements, the governor has used the word uh, genocide. And in Maine, in the truth and reconciliation process where um, Maine acknowledged <clears throat> that it had committed um, in its foster care program, cultural genocide against its native peoples. Uh, I know it's a really strong word and yet I feel that um, the history, our history and 
um, and its parallels <clears throat> that have used the words, um, the word genocide, um, speak to our needing to use that word here. So, um, I guess that's just my, and I don't know what, I don't know what kind of, um, information or the ledge council would need, um, in order to justify the use of that word. Um, uh, so I was just wondering, um, Michael, if there, if you know what that would look like, <clears throat> if I, Mr. Chair, if I may, yep. I'll, I'll say two things on that topic. Number one is what you ultimately decide to do is your political call. We were making, I was, the editors and I were making a comment that in the ideal, yes, there should be some type of supporting documentation and we would certainly prefer that. Uh, but ultimately this is your political call decision to make, not mine. That's number one. Number two though, is that the reading that uh, Representative Stevens did a few moments ago would actually, I think, be very helpful in that direction. And that's why I made the mention that if you do decide to leave the word ethnic, this language structure in, if I could have a copy of that page, it would really be helpful. Yep, I'll take care of that. And, um, we're going to, I mean, I think before we go today, and I want to be done today early, a little bit before three, um, I think what I want to leave Michael with is some of the more general, I think there's probably some things that we can agree on in a general sense of deleting sections or perhaps get a consensus on. If not, then we are obviously going to revisit this next week. Um, and, and I think we can consider, if we want to consider waiting to make any changes until next week, um, and sit with the language for, for a few days, um, that would be a reasonable way to go as well. Um, representative Triano, then Murphy. Yeah, I just, I guess I just wanted to follow up. I, you know, my involvement with the state hospital was not a tour. It was there. My, my um, mission was there to visit clients who were routinely sent there by courts to be evaluated. And sometimes, well, fortunately, there was a legal aid office uh, in the state hospital that um, helped to uh, or facilitated them being released uh, once uh, the evaluation was done. But oftentimes, the evaluations would take a considerable amount of time. So, you know, as I said before, the walking the halls, the B unit was the secure unit. So that was the place that I would always end up uh, and visiting. And, uh, you know, um, and you could feel it in the hallways. It was just such a weird, creepy place that, um, you know, again, I think it speaks loudly to the callousness and the, and the uh, or maybe not even that's not the proper word. I think maybe just the, the perception of what was needed to house people. And as you say, about 1,200 people or 1,700 people uh, at its maximum housed there. Um, they were well cared for. Um, and, you know, and again, I just think it's a really important piece of how this whole thing developed. You know, and I just want to make one other comment. You know, um, I started uh, working the public defender's office in 1981, and through the late 80s and into the 90s, uh, there was a family in a town which I'll I won't name um, that um, existed um, as what would be described as hill people um, who were um, accused of uh, inbreeding and um, were treated so poorly by both the community and social services. This is not in the 1930s. This is in the 1980s that this was happening. And I had occasion to meet with and represent these folks. And, you know, they just, they just, it was, it just continued. It really didn't stop. And I'm, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if it didn't stop other places presently in the state. But this was modern day that these people um, no one would rent to them. They were they were uh, incarcerated. The father was incarcerated for uh, incestual relationships with his children. Uh, you know the children were all um, um, disabled, and it just it just went on. And it was just a horrible story that um, that was part of what work that I did um, over the time. So um, 
it, it just it didn't end in the 1930s. Representative Murphy. Thank you. I'm going to um, go back to just the ending, the final resolve. And I think for me, um, if, if we do want to maintain the word genocide as well as ethnocide, it wouldn't be improper. Um, ethnocide is the disappearance of the culture and genocide is the disappearance of the people. And I think that the actions did um, contribute to an end that could have resulted in both if it didn't. And so um, for me, it's more the ethnocide leading to genocide isn't proper. It would be ethnocide and genocide. They're, they're separate actions. And I think if we go that path, we wouldn't need erasure because that is what ethnocide does. So that would be my recommendation. All right. Thank you. Um, Representative Parsons. Thank you, Chair. Uh, mine is actually quite small, although something um, compared to everything else we're talking about. It was just in the whereas from 1925 section. Um, I just don't know if it would be thoroughly accurate, the part that says, with the participation of leaders throughout Vermont state government. It was certainly within state government, but and maybe I'm wrong, but I don't know if it was all state government was participating in this. I mean, I'm sure there was probably agencies that had nothing to do with this possibly. I'm sure government was a tad smaller back then, but. Representative, do you want to comment on that? I did. I, I think that we do want to be a little bit careful because we are trying to speak as the General Assembly. We're not including the governor to sign on to this. So I think we do. I think Representative Parsons' point should should be carefully considered that, that we are um, not including that part of the government that isn't what we have control and sway over. I, they certainly implement the acts and laws that we put into um, statute, but it, it's a little bit um, difficult to sometimes draw that margin around things. Uh, I'm personally comfortable with the word within um, at that point. I, I have a question for us all. Um, and I, I think we asked this question last year. And, and so for those of us who, who may remember, but on line six, there's the word discredited. And it's not wrong. I just, does it fit there at that place without going on you know, I mean, you could have seven whereases about why it's discredited and how it's been discredited. And I think last year we talked about, I brought up, well, what about now discredited? And I think there was a discussion, I think, Michael, you led it, just about saying that um, this was this was sufficient shorthand for all of that, you know, that, 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 um, that in the end, this was discredited. Yeah, Michael, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. It's interesting you brought that point out because the editors were asking me about that this morning. And I had a recollection that we bounced that concept back and forth last year, last biennium. So some of you will not have been present for this particular conversation. And my recollection was that I had since discredited in an early, much earlier version last year. And the comment was made back to me, no, it was really discredited from the beginning and therefore just to use discredited. Obviously how you decide to use it is your call, but that's my recollection of the genesis of the conversation and why I told the editors this morning to just put discredited. If you want to change that, I certainly can. Yeah, I, I'm not sure it's necessary because this whole this whole thing is saying that it was wrong. And while it it may have been disputed back in the 
teens and 20s and 30s. It wasn't really discredited. It had changed over time um, and then or fell like, completely out of favor. So or, that right, just, if you want, Mr. Chair and members of the committee, I can just pull the word completely, whatever you want. Yeah. But I have a Rep bracket around it now. <laughs> the famous brackets. I have um, lots of brackets. <laughs> Representative Triana. Yeah, I don't have any strong feelings about it, but I think it was discredited. I think that it did not provide a solution to what the perceived problem was um, in nineteen in the nineteen twenties and thirties. Um, so, uh, you know, and it was based on uh, zo as I said before, zoological, biological, psychology, psychological hypotheses um, that um, didn't prove to be accurate in the end. So, you know, I mean, I think that term aptly describes the way this whole thing came down, but I don't have strong feelings about it. And if it's removed, that's fine with me. <laughs> well, and, and I, you know, to get to the, I mean, it's really important to be, you know, as right as we can be in the apology. I also want to point out that, you know, the floor report on this, I'll be doing the floor report. It will be somewhat of a history lesson for the whole body and for the public to hear. And while, again, while that's not going to be recorded in the same way this is gonna be recorded, it gives the context that I think the, in some of the, in the case of discredited for me, I think it would show that it was discredited and I'm not sure whether we need it in the apology because the rest of the apology insinuates that it was the wrong policy. But again, I, I don't want to make final decisions on language till next week. And um, um, so before we start to just go through this again, just very quickly to get those sections that we can tell Michael to take out now and provide us with, with uh, um, the next draft, I, I would ask you know, for your own and our own education if you if you take a look on the on our page for this week on this issue um, there is there's a there's a new do, there's a document that's new to us is the Kevin Dan history that was written in 1991 and Kevin Dan was the fellow if you if you followed if you remember from the from the um, testimony who found the 40 some odd cases of materials in the laundry room um, and it, it's a much, it's, it's a very compressed version of breeding better Vermonters and, um, Nancy Gallagher's book is much more flushed out, uh, in terms of, uh, in terms of information. But what Kevin Dan wrote, I just ask us to read it. I'm not going to, you know, just, it, it, it was what was up on my screen when I had my emails up yesterday. Um, it was, uh, it, it's, I guess it's close to a synopsis of what we've been dealing with from the historian's perspective, um, specific, more, more closely related to um, Breeding Better Vermonters. I think Mercedes de Guardiola's essay is good and is a good resource, but a different facet that we should also just be up to date on as we make our final decisions. But those, um, you know, the material that was in the um, speaking of discredited, you know, the what I was reading when when my screen came up was a, you know, was a letter from uh, Henry Goddard, who was who in 1912 wrote a very seminal book on eugenics. And it's one of the books that that got Vermonters um, hooked into eugenics and, and Harry Perkins at this time, this is 1934. So there's this whole thing that we, um, the American genetics movement had slowed way down by the early thirties and had changed. There were still pockets of people who believed that it was all about heredity. And, and, uh, but so this, this, this Henry, Harry Perkins was trying to raise money for the American eugenics society of which he was a president of. And Goddard wrote, 
this is the original guy now. One of the original guys in, in, in America wrote, um, why not drop the whole works? We've carried on for several years and what have we accomplished? It was good fun as long as we could afford it, but now it's a different matter. If Hitler succeeds in his wholesale sterilization, it will be a demonstration that will carry eugenics farther than a hundred eugenic societies could. If he makes a fiasco of it, it will set the movement back where a hundred eugenic societies could never re resurrect it. You know, and so there's this, there's this, um, and this apology and any floor remarks I make aren't going to tie this into Nazi Germany directly because there's no proof that Harry Perkins ever met with the, the, the Germans. I mean, it, it, that, that's a whole other world. Um, and that takes away from the General Assembly's role in it and it takes away from this. But just it gives a picture of by the 1930s, just after this bill was the, 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 the sterilization bill was passed by the General Assembly and signed into law 90 years ago, um, how far it had tailed off. You know, so yes, it was discredited and there were battles within the movement itself, but um, it was also at the cusp of something else completely different. The where the Germans took it was so far afield um, from, from what even the Americans were working on. Um, and they had been in, they had been as interested in it as we were for thirty years. Um, so, with that, sorry, <laughs> um, Representative Murphy. Thank you. Well, you were talking. Not that I wasn't listening. It was it was fascinating. Is um, I can't find the Kevin Dan link. It's look for Paul Carnahan. Oh, okay. Um, got it. Okay, thank you. I wrote down, didn't write down that name. And Chair, that no, that's uses the word Abenaki in in that article that's written in the nineties. So when I read it yesterday, I was struck by that. So, um, Michael, or and committee, we have made suggestions. Um, do we want to leave this draft the way that it is right now, rather than make any decisions on it? Or is there, are there clear decisions that we, you want to make today? Um, I've, I've, I've penciled the scheduling this in for Thursday and Friday to finish up next week. And so the question is, do you want to go through this in the next 10 minutes or so and give Michael some broad, you know, broad instructions on stuff. And then we'll let the more bracketed material late wait until next week. I think that's worth at least getting confirmation on the um, changes that we all kind of nodded our head on the simples. Okay. There were a few. Uh, um, John and then Michael. John, did you have a comment? Well, I, I uh, you know, I always love listening to my brother, Chip uh, Troiano, and I think leaving the historical stuff in is, is powerful. So um, I think, you know, I was earlier saying calling them down. I, I could live with the fuller history. I would think I agree with Representative Hang on that one, whereas that's about the uh, chronic health disparities that was added. I think that is the one that would be, I would say, could go. Michael? If it would be all right with the committee, I've numbered all the clauses, and I would, if you would be willing to give me five minutes now to go through all of them by number and tell you what I have heard is that you may want to change. That's good. Yep. Because I've been busy, and I actually have another clean copy just in case in front of me. I, I I appreciate that you're here and taking notes as you're listening, Michael. As you know, legislative council's been a little shorthanded this year, and we feel like we've done a lot of our editing ourselves at times. So I really appreciate you having these notes ready to go. Okay. So with that, members of the committee, uh, I'll tell you what I have heard. 
that for right now, it seems that first clause, at least for the moment, stays in subject to your further discussion next week. I've heard arguments both pro and con, but I didn't hear an overwhelming removal at this juncture. I did not hear any removal with respect to the second whereas clause at all. On the third whereas clause, I think I heard the one about the Department of Public Welfare, nearly unanimous concurrence to remove that clause. I'm looking at the squares. Yeah, I think that's right. Okay. When I wrote, when I put it in last night, I thought it might well not stay that it was part of the information that I had been given, but I questioned whether it really believed, belonged there. Uh, in clause number four, I see two things. Number one is that you're still having a conversation about retaining or not retaining the word discredited, and that I'm going to change the word throughout to within. Yeah. And on line and, nine, oops, go yeah, ahead. And I, I have it here. And my proposal for here is on line nine, surveyed, targeted, survey targeted Abenaki and members of other indigenous bands. Um, committee, do you want to read, Barbara? I, I, think, I think that bands still implies they're Abenaki. Um, the Abenaki, I, I think what we were hearing is there were other tribes, not you, just bands. I was holding off from that word tribes because it, Maybe uh, indigenous uh, people or is the word other indigenous and, populations? Exactly. So other indigenous people populations. So I think one of the things that Nancy, I found a phrase that I think if I got this right from Nancy Gallagher yesterday was, um, I mean, she had used indigenous family bands, but I think that there was a question. So it's like, in, you know, indigenous people, comma, you know, some that, that we now recognize as Abnaki, I think was her suggestion. Um, the reason, Mr. Chair and members of the committee, the reason I'll be honest why I hesitated with, between bands and tribes, I know in Canada, bands are used as if they were tribes. Right. It, yeah. They're, and they're, so I want to be careful that and mm. people or population or something of that sort seemed clearer because you're referring to non Abenaki. Right. So I would, can I suggest, suggest that we bracket that? Cause I would, I would, I think Vermonters of native American Indian heritage comma, you know, this, again, some of whom was, we recognize as Abenaki might be the answer, but I'm not going to say it is today. Can, oh. can I offer that in our state statute in that title one, the language that's used is indigenous native American peoples now known as Western Abnaki tribes. The question there is- But I wouldn't, I wouldn't do the now known because that's saying they all are that, but the indigenous Native American peoples would be an inclusive language. Right, I had thought the Native American Indian heritage, which I also pulled from the statute, was what you were referring to last evening. But I also heard yesterday, there was a lot of discussion uh, about naming Abenaki, yes, but also recognizing there were some non Abenaki. Absolutely. And that's why, if you didn't know, if you had known as, now known as Abenaki, that would imply everybody was Abenaki. Yeah. I, I mean, a number of whom are now known. I mean, there's just bracket it. Let's just let's, let's bracket it and just not make a decision on it today. Okay. So I'll leave what I have the Native, the Native American alone for the moment. And that's a, a bracketed question. Big question mark for next week. Uh, clause eight, that's the S-59. I heard yays. I think I heard more yays than nays, but I'm not sure. That's about the 1927 Senate bill. Yeah, I think right now, keep it in. Okay, okay. Representative Kalaki, you had a different opinion maybe? No, 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 I, I, I think keep it in. I, I was going to the other one, there was discussion about the three D's, the delinquency, dependency, and deficiency. And um, in one of our- Oh, things, mental, added, right, line mental, eight. And Where are you now? 
in the, in the one above Michael, the one in, whereas in 1925. Okay. Evidence of alleged delinquency, dependency, and mental deficiency. Oh, you had a discussion about whether the word mental is the is the right word, even though it does indicate that people with cognitive disabilities were targeted. But I, I think it's. So I, I think know. deleting mental, I think, is was was suggested on a couple different levels. Um, also, it from a from a um, the three D's perspective. Yeah. Um, delinquency, dependency, and deficiency were the three D's. So, um, yeah, I think. Do you again, want me if, to delete if, the word mental? If people are comfortable, uh, I mean, let's just bracket it. Let's just bracket individual words for next week. Okay, other than the fact, for example, that throughout to within, you seem to be in agreement on that one at line seven. Yes. Okay, uh, clause six and clause seven. That's the whereas the General Assembly adopted 1931 and whereas Act 174. I didn't hear any comments on either of those two clauses nor did I hear comments on clause eight, clause nine. Note that in clause nine, I changed it to just old stock. It had read slightly differently earlier and uh, the chair indicated just make it old stock. Clause 10, uh, that's where- And, and how I, does that, we're, oh, okay, I see where you are. Never mind, go ahead. Whereas eugenic survey received you go down to the near the end, uh, I see a note here about, or I put in a note, maybe it should be uh, impacts, uh, something to the effect of irreversible impacts on the targeted groups and directly affected individuals or something along that line. Um, it, if you wanna add that with a bracket. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm put a bracket here, you'll, talk about it next week. Yep. Okay. Uh, in clause in clause number 12, you're still having a discussion as to whether you're leaving it in at all. And if you do leave it in, I know you'll have to decide the uh, Abenaki Native American nomenclature. So I'm just putting a bracket and a big question. That's the Susan Arn Arnoff clause, which I yep. sense you all have not decided yay or nay at this point. Yep. Uh, clause, where are we here? Clause 13, or excuse me, I'm sorry. Clause 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, yes, 13. Clause 13, uh, I'm to after children and adults, you seem clear on that one, that that goes yep. in now. And the word continuity after kinship, that seemed to be absolutely clear now that I can add that in. The first resolve clause, I didn't hear any changes from anyone. The second resolve clause, of course, there's the question about the word erasure, and then the, uh, which I first heard you wanted in. And then of course, this whole question of whether the genocide, whether it's ethnocide and genocide stays in or doesn't stay in, and I have, a big question mark and a bracket on that for the moment. And yes, I did receive your email, Mr. Chair. Okay, and before we go, um, Representative Hango, are you still uncomfortable with the concept of, um, I mean, I, we talked about should be taken as opposed to shall be taken. We're not ordering this could be interpreted. You, you would felt like we were ordering a future legislature to do things. Um, are you comfortable with where it is now? I'm outside of the word genocide, I know you're uncomfortable with the word genocide, um, but are you comfortable with the should be taken language? Not particularly, but thank you for asking. Okay. What I, I will, if I may, Mr. Chair, uh, just as a procedural matter, not taking sides, uh, the should would not be, I believe that the should would not be viewed as binding. The shall would be viewed as binding. Okay. All right, everybody. Um, 
so we're going to pick this up next week, like I said, and I appreciate all the hard work, hard work we've done on this so far. This is not comfortable. Um, and, and the more we dig into it, and I think the testimony we heard yesterday really in the last two days really illustrated how difficult this can be, not only for us, but for the affected communities. And I just want to um, thank you for your patience and for your perseverance in trying to hear everything um, and respect everything that we're trying to do here. I really do appreciate that. This is, um, this is um, not easy work. So I have another meeting. Thank you so much. Have a good